Okay, we got an inquiry from uh, <laughs> as our friend here again, which remains nameless for the time being. So, we got a question here from one of our longtime subscribers. So, let's read it out. When you were in college, did you struggle with porn? And, uh, oh, 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 no, no, hold on, hold on. All right. So, when you were in college, did you struggle with porn and junk food a lot? Being disconnected from the elements and constantly thinking about upcoming assignments slash tests stresses me out. I know college is not gonna serve me in three years, but I have to go or else my parents are gonna kick me out and force me to work full time, which is something I don't want to do. I've been stuck on bad habits such as porn and junk food for a good two, three years. I notice when I get on NoFab, I start to have negative emotions and visions come up from my past, like failed relationships and remembering how good life was Oh man, she went into the house, not in a good way. She broke through the, the net. I don't think my mom's gonna be very happy about that. I notice when I get on NoFap, I start to have negative emotions and visions come up from my past, like failed relationships and remembering how good life was before all my mental programming. What would you do if you were in my situation? Sorry for the long rant. So, uh, do you think I need to purge stored trauma from my unconscious to free myself up? All right, so Multi-part question will give you a multi-part answer First of all When you were in college did you struggle with porn and junk food a lot? Absolutely Absolutely the first year the second year and the third year and that's after third year is when I started to make implement changes uh, but the first three years, I was eating pizza regularly, not just like uh, every now and then, regularly. I was eating McDonald's. And to be specific, it was the junior chickens because at the time, you know, they were so cheap. Uh, they were like one with tax, 146. You know, I don't know what the price is now, but you'd get like three of those. Pizza was a thing. There was this mean place that made this mean pizza. So uh, I, it was sort of a ritual for me after, after uh, an exam or a test, a major, a midterm, and uh, also on weekends with friends. So I was eating, you know, your typical sad diet, uh, and I was eating a typical junk food, chocolate ice cream. Ice cream was a thing with me. So yeah, I did struggle with that and I did struggle with porn also. And uh, same thing. Something happened uh, after three years, I began to make the implement the changes, all the changes. But the first three years of university, I was teasing the weasel regularly also. And, and uh, this actually reminds me of something me and my friend did, my friends did in second year, uh, is inspired by the episode on Seinfeld called The Contest where uh, you know Jerry, Kramer, Elaine and George have this contest amongst one another who can uh, go longest without teasing the weasel and uh, we actually ran that test we actually I think I I ended up winning it and it was a uh, it was like a three week you know everybody caved in within a, within a three week period you know, that, that just shows you how addicted we were all were. I mean, there was like four of us involved and it only took three weeks to win the contest. So, of course, after I won the contest, I went back into my old ways. Uh, and then I started to make changes after, uh, on, after third year. Uh, yeah, after third year is when I started to make major changes. I had the sudden awakening of some sorts not exactly an overwhelming spiritual awakening, more so uh, just an awakening, like I need to improve myself here, you know, I'm a, I'm a disaster. 
Uh, my sleeping was all screwed up. I was uh, sleeping 7 a.m., waking up 2, 3 p.m. regularly the first three years. Didn't go to classes. I didn't go to classes. I just, they, I basically just went when it was the test. So then my sleep was all messed up because I, I didn't have to wake up, go to classes or anything. So yeah, I definitely struggled with that. And uh, especially when everyone around you is doing it and it's the norm and when you don't know any better. Now I so say you know better. I didn't know any better. There was no, YouTube was just coming out at the time. I didn't know there was nobody I watched on YouTube that enlightened me on things like NoFap. Uh, and it was actually around like what, 2012, I was in university. So it was around 2012 when I began, I find out about Elliot Hulse's channel and I heard him say something about NoFab and I did some research on it and I, I, then I went on a, a very strong streak then. I think I went on like a six months thing, you know, five, six months. I started to find out about uh, better, you know, better food choices. I did, cause I didn't know, it's not like I knew. But see, now you know, but you're still involved in these behaviors, which is fine. That's all right because, you know, whether you know or not, you're an addict to these things. So. Just because you know your predicament doesn't mean you can get rid of it or you can deal with it or transcend it, let's say is the best word, over, overnight. You know, it takes, takes time depending on the depth of the addiction and depending on your situation in the present moment. Clearly you're not happy with the present moment, so you're going to resort to things like porn and things like junk food. So that's my dad here, so I'm just gonna pause the video for a little bit uh, to say hello. Yes, okay, and uh, I think we got our friend back here. So, that's, that's to answer the first part of your question. I know college is not gonna serve me in three years, but I have to go or else my parents are gonna kick me out and force me to work full time, which is something I don't wanna do. Well, see, that's the story you tell yourself that your, your parents are gonna kick you out and uh, they're gonna force you to work full time because that's not, that's, they're not, I mean, that's not, that's just a story you're telling yourself and you may be surprised at the relatively, not positive, but the relatively calm reaction your parents might have to you deciding not to go through college. My brother was surprised. You know, he dropped out uh, six months ago. He was surprised at the serene reaction from my parents. He thought it was gonna be a shit storm. Uh, somebody I've been talking to on Instagram, uh, one of our subscribers, same thing. And he comes from an Asian background, so he also expected a shit storm. Uh, but he said actually his parents were relatively okay with the decision. So you may be surprised that it's not as bad as your, the storyline you're telling yourself is. Uh, and even if it is, even if it is, you said my parents are gonna force me to work full time, which is something I don't wanna do. Nobody's gonna force you to do anything, especially not in this day and age. Especially not in this day and age. And uh, if your parents kick you out, well, you go and find something to do, take a part-time job, a full-time job of your own, not, you know, of your own, uh, for a little while at least, or figure something out. There's a lot of ways out. You can figure something out, okay? You may be surprised that your parents do not kick you out, but I'm saying even if they do, then they do. You know, then you make your choices. So you may have to uh, wait out the opportunity cost and the pros and the cons uh, of, of the decisions. You know, you may say to yourself, well, if you decide to drop out, you say, okay, uh, here's the worst case scenario and prepare yourself for that. And here's the best case scenario and prepare yourself for that. And if you're prepared to play around with both scenarios, you'll be fine. You'll be okay. So prepare for the worst case scenario. That's what my brother did when he dropped out. He expected the worst, which actually ended up, what ended up happening is the best case scenario. Uh, and uh, so you do the same thing. You prepare, you play out the worst case scenario and be prepared for it. You are your own decision maker. There's nobody making decisions for you. That's simply a storyline you have 
which I understand where it's coming from because right now you're in a cycle uh, of you know habits that are unuseful so I would do that if I was you I would prepare for the worst case scenario and I yeah if you're gonna make a decision to drop out then you're already prepared maybe line up a job for you or something or do something like that right but just keep in mind you are the decision maker nobody's making no decisions for you especially not in this day and age I understand 50 years ago 60 years ago yeah you know there was a lot of fear around being cut off from the family not in this day and age not in this day and age no no uh, and if you do decide to stick out your degree well uh, I am using my degree right now to do the English teaching so it may not be such a bad idea yeah I'm, that's what I'm saying you want to weigh the pros and the cons and really uh, run a, an analysis of your options and then make a decision because I tell you something if you finish your degree you'll do what I do right now you said it's three more years you'll do what I do if you would like if you would like to teach English you could certainly do that you'll be able to do that you'll you'll you know it's very very easy you're American so that's one prerequisite the other prerequisite is a bachelor's degree in anything so you also consider what can that degree do to you the other thing that I'm using the degree for is when I go to Ecuador I will be able to get a permanent residence visa called the professional visa which requires you only to have a, a bachelor's degree in just about anything turns out the degree which I thought was useless was not useless after all that actually me sticking it out despite having thoughts to you know drop out turned out to be a good decision it, it turned out to be a really good decision in my case and it may not be in your case it may be a, you have to figure out for yourself see when I was in college I didn't really have a strong urge to drop out. I, I sort of had a guidance to keep going. I, the, the idea was there, but I never felt strongly pulled towards it like say my brother did. My brother clearly he had to drop out, even though he only had a year left, by the way. But his, the urge to drop out was too strong, too strong. So that means his inner guidance told him to. Uh, at least uh, that's probably what it is anyway. So in the same way, you have to listen to your own gui inner guidance. If the inner guidance is, is really pushing you to drop out, it, then getting a degree is not for you. But if, you're, if you feel like, yeah, I'll, I can stick this out, and, and you feel like, all right, let's stick it out for different reasons, for strategic reasons, like you want to still live with your parents, you don't want to have to you know, go off on your own, and at the same time, you see that you could do something with the degree, and you maybe teach English in the future which is an upcoming you know it's an upcoming field you know the, the company I'm working for has only been around since 2013 and they're already like number one online company in the world not just English teaching only in a matter of seven years you know so this is an upcoming thing they're gonna open up different markets in South, uh, South in South Korea and uh, to the rest of the world everybody wants to learn English now but the bachelor's degree is a, is a prerequisite in all the companies now. So you also consider that option if it's something you want to do because the degree is useful in this world. It tells, it tells this world that, hey, you know, you're uh, a trustworthy person. You know? It's really, uh, you know, uh, but, and I'm grateful that I, I could use it in that way. Uh, and uh, so you have to listen to the inner guidance, but nobody's forcing you. Keep that in mind, okay? Nobody's forcing you to do anything. You do some thinking, and when you take a decision, that's it. You take it, you own it. You own the decision. You know, that's it. You own it. All right, I decided to drop out. I'm going to have to go and work in a coffee shop four days a week. I have to do that now. All right, own that decision until you hear the next message, until the next opportunity pops up. You know, or you decide, hey, I'm going to go work on a farm. And you do a, one of those exchange programs. You save up some money for a ticket and you go and you work on a farm. And you stay with them and they feed you and etc. Many, many options. Many ways to go on about the world. Many different paths. You have to be quiet enough and listen. 
listen to the inner guidance okay so another part of the question I've been stuck on bad habits such as porn and junk food for a good two three years I notice when I get on nofab I start to have negative emotions and visions come up from my past like failed relationships and remembering how good life was before all my mental programming what would you do if you were in my situation so of course when we were all kids pre-culture pre-programming we were free and we yearn for that freedom again and that freedom is ours absolutely make no mistake about it it is our birthright to be free uh, just like we were as kids as children free from the shackles of time free from the shackles of uh, social conditioning social norms uh, conforming to so certain social and cultural norms etc that's our birthright and we claim it when we become adults and we realize the predicament we're in we start to claim it again and it's a process I'm currently trying to reclaim back my external freedom from the shackles of the clock hence the off-grid project hence the the desire uh, of living off-grid it's you know I want to be free from the clock I want to be free from numbers, you know, illus illusory things that society agreed upon and gave it value, uh, such as money, you know, just to what, to, to, to buy and rent. So these are all things that are blocking the inner child in many ways. So then I, uh, you know, I embark on this journey, you know, I, it's a, it's a process. It's a process. Right now you want to be free from your biological urge to reproduce which continuously shows itself up in porn addiction you know because you're not really your biology so you want to be free from that so then you work with that you want to be free from the food drug also right the addictions to the food drug of course nobody wants to be a slave to th th things like that addictions uh, but then it's a process and you know it's a holistic approach to these things these addictions are filling up an emotional void inside of us uh, and you said, so you said something else, that negative, negative things come up in you, uh, such as, you know, like, I start to have negative emotions and visions when you get on NoFap. Yeah, that's a cleansing process. When you do fasting physically, you may get acne, uh, you get mucus on your tongue, etc. Yeah, of course. So NoFap is one tool to purge you emotionally also. So you, you have to sit with these emotions. And if you have to cry, you have to cry. If you're laughing, you're laughing. And if you're angry, go somewhere and scream and yell and release it. You've got to be with the emotion to transcend the emotion. You've got to allow it to express itself. If you got a hose and you turn on the water, uh, the water has got to find, it's, it's got to express itself. It's got to flow out of the hose. It's the same thing, you know, emotions and water are related to one another. So when an emotion comes up, it has to be expressed for it to be released out of the hose. Otherwise, it gets bottled in there, and at some point, it has to be released. So then we stuff it down with food, with addictions, with porn. So yeah, it has to find an outlet to express. So you have to find an outlet for your uh, sadness to express itself in the form of tears, your anger in the form of screaming and yelling, uh, etc. So catharsis, some form of a catharsis wouldn't be such a bad thing. Find yourself a safe space somewhere, out in nature, in your room, if you feel comfortable. Probably not, you live with your parents. Find some woodlands that are unfrequented by humans. Uh, and uh, do some form of catharsis, release the emotions. You feel a lot better, a lot clearer, less obstructive things inside you. Uh, and then you will find that naturally you're less addicted uh, and you're, you're able to be more of an observant to your addiction and uh, dictate things. So yeah, do you think I need to purge store trauma? I think I just answered that. I think so. I think so. I think uh, find you a good place. 
uh, and they may take several sessions of catharsis, of releasing the emotions. You'll feel a lot better. That's something I did on the journey as well. Uh, after three years, I started the nofab. I started to take care of the diet a lot better. And then the emotions came up, of course. A lot of anger, a lot of repressed anger. So it took me lots of catharsis to uh, come to a good place. It took a, like a good, good year of back and forth of catharsis. Sometimes I go release, I think it's all gone, and then a month later, I need to go again and do it again. And I found my spots in nature and it worked like that for me. It worked like that for me. So, yeah, definitely. Hopefully this video helps you. I'm sure it, a lot of people are gonna relate here. So, yeah. Thank you to all the Patreons for your uh, consistent support, continued support. It's been over a year now since I launched Patreon and we've still got a lot of people supporting, so. Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate it. If you'd like to support, throw me a couple of bucks a month. To the community, to the off-grid, everything goes to the off-grid. There's PayPal if you want to make one-time donations. All of it goes towards the off-grid project now at this point. So, yeah. Instagram, aside, mobile, and until next time, may the force be with you.